For this experiment, we used whole milk, food coloring, and dishwashing soap. Um, so how this experiment works is when you pour the whole milk into a big container and then you take the food coloring and also put that in um, and then you take a cotton ball and you soak it in dishwashing soap and if you don't know how dishwashing soap works it works by attracting those um, fatty molecules very very similar to like a magnet um, so it attracts those fatty molecules into um, to it which is why when you put it um, on a kind of a greasy pan, it helps to clean that greasy pan, right? And then we know that we used whole milk, which is the highest um, content of fat that you can buy in milk. So when you combine those two, you have the dishwashing soap when you put the cotton ball in that is attracting um, those fatty milk molecules and pushing away those food coloring molecules, right? So that's where you're seeing all the swirling kind of happening and that movement. So as you can see, we tried a lot of different things to um, see what would break down the bonds that hold styrofoam together and um, cause it to dissolve. Um, so we tried vinegar and we tried acetone in a very low dose. It was um, equivalent to what you use for nail polish. And um, we tried uh, hydrochloric acid, which you would think would have broke it down. Um, but as you could tell from the video, it just caused a little bit of floating um, of the styrofoam. So what you saw in the very last clip of that in the red cup was lacquer thinner. And lacquer thinner is used primarily to uh, remove or to take off uh, paint that is not water-based. Um, the reason why lacquer thinner caused the styrofoam to dissolve is because it is a highly corrosive liquid. And that liquid um, causes those molecules that hold the styrofoam together to break down and dissolve. Now, interesting fact, um, the first year that I taught, we actually taught um, chemical and physical changes. Well, as you know, what differs from physical to chemical changes is the ability to reverse the process that you do, um, causing you to get back to the original item you started with. Now, originally, we thought that this might be possible because we didn't know much about how styrofoam was made. So we actually called the company and got confirmation that it actually changes the molecular structure of the styrofoam um, and therefore it's not able to be turned back into a cup or something like that again, which is why styrofoam is not usually reused or um, recycled in any way. Mentos and Coke experiment works because as we know, Coke is carbonated, um, which means it has carbon dioxide in it. Carbon dioxide is made up of two types of molecules, carbon molecules and two oxygen molecules. So when we 
put the Mentos into the Coke, it creates a chemical reaction which allows more carbon dioxide to form, um, which causes that explosion. And because of the Mentos, because they're so dense, it happens so quickly that you see it shoot up. So the question is, why did mine work better than Mrs. Steele's? Um, take note, what did Miss Steele do different from me? She poured her Coke out into a um, different container, which meant she lost a lot more carbon dioxide, right? Where I kept mine in the original two liter bottle. So I had a lot more carbon dioxide to start out with where Mrs. Steele did not. So you saw mine have a bigger chemical reaction because I had more of those carbon dioxide molecules to start with. All right, so to get credit for this one, guys, we need you to comment below with one thing that you would like to see in a future episode. Yep, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications and like our video.